dear students uh, now in this lecture we will discuss about the reactions and the kinetics of free radical reactions okay so the reactions we will study what kind of reactions free radical shows and how the rate of reaction can be calculated for free radical reactions so what kind of reactions inorganic free radical shows actually they shows the reactions of type dimerization disproportionation displacement reactions or substitution reactions insertion reactions rearrangement reactions addition reactions subtraction reactions so all these reactions inorganic free radical shows because they are very reactive in nature okay because they are having the unpaired electrons uh, the reactions generally occurs in gaseous phase and sometimes in non polar solvents the reactions can be catalyzed under light heat or other radical produ producing conditions so what are the conditions i have given you the in the previous lecture we have studied about the the methods of production okay so the the method of the methods of production of uh, free radicals are we can thermally generate the free radicals uh, we can uh, photochemically generate we can thermally generate and we can generate through electric discharge or we can generate through oxidation addition reaction so the reactions should be done under these conditions so that chain initiation can start so actually the free radical reaction mechanism it have three parts it can be classified into three parts so the first step in the free radical reaction mechanism is chain initiation and the second step is chain propagation where the the number of reactions can be occurring and then the chain termination when we get the product so what is chain initiation actually so chain initiation is the homolytic fission of any molecule by heat thermal or through uh, this photochemical processes to generate the radical so in the initiation process we will generate the free radical and it can again can be done through electric discharge or oxidation reduction reactions so chain initiation means we are initiating or generating the free radicals so this is the first step of free radical reaction mechanism then the second step is chain propagation so in the chain propagation the the formed the the synthesized free radicals in the chain initiation step will undergo a number of reactions the reactions may be dimerization addition disproportionation insertion rearrangement displacement or maybe subtraction type so this is a chain propagation reaction now the third step is chain termination so chain termination or here the product formation will takes place and this can be done through addition of inhibitors which can inhibit the uh, chain propagation reactions so now we will study about the kinetics of free radical reactions so what is the kinetics of free radical reactions for that we have written some uh, reactions of free radicals so uh, this first reaction in this the monomeric molecule this molecule is converting into radical the radical generation so this is the radical generation step so this is chain initiation step so this can be done through thermal process through photochemical process through electric discharge or through oxidation reduction reaction now this generated free react radical it can react with the molecule to form to generate again the free radicals and these free radicals they are again and again generated during the chain propagation reactions okay so these chain propagation reaction will in the will include a number of reactions like uh, this um, addition reactions uh, polymerization reaction rearrangement reaction hydrogen abstraction insertion and uh, the other reactions which i i have discussed so this is the chain propagation step and we have written all the uh, 
uh, rate uh, this constants for these reactions. Now this reaction is showing the chain termination step where this radical uh, reacted with the molecule to form the products. Uh, okay? So this radical can again destroy it at the surface. It, this may be possible or this radical can destruct in gas phase also. So these are the two steps where these radicals they are generated. So this radical is the intermediate part of this reaction and in these three uh, reactions these radicals they are used. Okay. So this the radical is actually the intermediate one. Okay, you can understand this is chain initiation reaction because radical is generated. Here the radical is reacting with the species. So this is a kind of chain propagation reactions. There are a number of steps may be possible. This is the chain termination reaction where the product will be formed. The radical may destroy or used through the formation of product can be destroyed at the surface or can be destroyed in the gas phase. So these three are the uses of radical where while in case of uh, here in these two reactions this radical is generating. So we will apply the steady state treatment according to steady state treatment the concentration of the intermediate. What is the intermediate here? Here the intermediate is radical free radical so the concentration of free radical will remain the constant okay because it is formed and it is again used so if we apply the steady state treatment we will get the dr uh, dot upon dt is equal to zero so its uh, its uh, concentration will remain constant with the time apply steady state treatment okay we will apply the steady state treatment First, we know that in the first reaction, the radical is formed. So, this is having the positive rate of reaction. Okay. Now, again here, the radical is formed. So, it is positive. Now, the R radical is consumed in these three process. So, we had shown it by negative sign. Formation by the positive sign and consume consume consumption by the negative sign so this plus this minus uh, in the reactions where the uh, a radical is consumed uh, that can be minus and uh, by applying the steady state approximation because we are just talking about the formation and consumption of this free radical here in these two reactions the free radical is generating and in these three radical the in the three reactions the radical is consumed so we are talking about the rate of reaction uh, for this radical so applying the steady state uh, treatment this rate will equals to zero okay so now we uh, can uh, can put together the uh, the values that are having rg in a dot and the other one at the other side so that we can calculate the concentration of the radical so this will become the concentration of radical okay now we know the overall rate of reaction the overall rate of reaction is k3 uh, this is the actually the overall reaction where the products are formed so here the rate of reaction can be in known as this uh, k3 r dot m so this is the rate of reaction where the rate will be slow. So this is the overall rate of reaction. You will find this K3. So now uh, we will put the value of this R dot in this equation so that we will get the overall rate of reaction. Okay. So we will put the uh, this value in this equation so that we can find out the uh, rate of overall reaction. Now we will, we can obtain the rate of overall reaction. Okay, so rate of overall react, overall reaction can be calculated through the rate of overall reaction was K three R dot M, K three R dot M. So the value of R dot was taken, and the this will be the rate of overall reaction. Now the one term is the chain length. So what is chain length? Chain length is actually the rate of overall reaction. That is uh, this. 
upon the rate of initiation reaction so what was the rate of initiation reaction so rate of initiation reaction was k1 m so this is the rate of initiation reaction k1 m and overall rate of reaction will be that of the because the third reaction is the slow step so overall reaction can be calculated through k3 m and r dots concentrations okay so the uh, chain length will equals to this rate of overall uh, reaction upon rate of initiation reaction so uh, this we will get uh, this k3m upon k3m plus k4 plus k5 minus k2m alpha minus 1 so this will be the chain length for free radical reaction now uh, some identification methods for free radical so we will discuss about the the methods for identification or characterization of uh, free radicals the most common methods for uh, identifying the uh, the free radicals they are spectroscopic methods especially where we can apply the magnetic field they are the especially the important methods for identification of free radicals the emission and absorption spectroscopy have been used for detection and estimation of radicals in the reaction systems okay so emission spectroscopy so emission spectra generally uh, employed when the reaction is uh, uh, taken under the flame while the absorption spectra is generally applied in the studies using the flash photolysis technique okay so these are the two spectroscopic techniques where uh, we can identify the free radicals generated during the chemical reaction the one most important method is the electron spin spectroscopy this spectroscopy you have studied uh, in the spectroscopy uh, paper that uh, this is a very interesting spectroscopy which is used to detect the free radicals or the species which are having unpaired electrons okay so this method is very popular method for uh, detection of free radicals okay so uh, this uh, is actually in this uh, spectroscopy a splitting energy level in a strong magnetic field can be seen so due to the presence of unpaired electron energy levels is split in a strong field and the uh, the atoms or radicals to be studied they are introduced into a quartz tube between the poles of a magnet and at a right angle to the board face broad face of a wave guide the power is provided through klystron okay and uh, the detector then can read the absorption radiation which is directly proportional to the number of unpaired electrons so as uh, the, the detector will detect the uh, the absorption uh, of radiation that are directly uh, that are directly proportional to the number of unpaired electrons so because you have studied in detail in the spectroscopy paper so i am just giving you the just about the identification techniques for a free radical now this esr spectroscopy is very useful because it can detect uh, up to 10 to the power minus 10 molar concentration of free radicals sometimes for short li lived radicals spin traps like nitroso radical they are used so the free radicals Uh, the, they are mixed with the nitroso radical because the free radicals they are short lived then they when they react with the nitroso radicals they give nitroxide radicals of this type and these nitroxide radicals they are having the long life so that they can be detected so sometimes we use the traps spin traps so that we can generate a free radical that is having the long life and can be detected easily now the other technique is mass spectrometry so this mass spectrometry it can also help a full in uh, in detecting the free radicals and uh, actually the presence of methyl and ethyl free radicals during the decomposition of ethane uh, then they have been studied through the mass spectrometry uh, okay 
then the next kind of methods they are chemical methods a number of chemical methods are there uh, one of which involves the reaction of metal oxides with the uh, uh, with the uh, free radicals so that they can generate the hydrogen so hydrogen radical can be uh, studied so we can detect the hydrogen uh, free radical so uh, this is the method uh, where we can estimate the free radicals based on their high chemical reactivity so introduction of metal oxides into reaction system they can used uh, for the detection of this hydrogen free radical uh, then the other kind of uh, this uh, method is laser induced uh, fluorescence uh, that is lif and here also the free radical is reacted with the no for detection of the product so these kind of products they are generated uh, they, these uh, this product can be studied uh, the, the generated products can be detected through laser induced fluorescence method okay now concluding uh, the lecture uh, we have studied in this lecture about the reactions of free radicals uh, their reaction mechanism and the general methods of their identification so the reactions involved uh, in the free radicals are generally dimerization disproportionation displacements insertion rearrangement addition and subtraction type of reactions and these reactions they generally occur through three steps so if we study their reaction mechanism there are three steps one is chain initiation the other is chain propagation and the, uh, the third one is the chain termination so the chain initiation is the method of actually the production of the free radicals okay then chain propagation the number of reactions can be uh, taken place in the chain propagation reaction and if we uh, add some inhibitors then it becomes chain termination and the formation of products takes place then we have studied about the kinetics of free radical reactions where we have studied the uh, the calculation of rate of overall reaction of free radical mechanism and then with the help of the overall rate of reaction we have calculated the uh, chain length of a free radical reaction then we have studied about the methods for identification of free radicals they are emission spectroscopy absorption spectroscopy electron spin resonance spectroscopy mass spectrometry some chemical methods and laser induced fluorescence so this is all about the reactions of free radicals and their identification thank you very much